Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve quadratics in a special form uh, called binomial replacement. And so I think it's easiest just to jump right in. Uh, we'll go right into an example and you guys can see what I mean. So let's set up 4x minus 5 squared equals 8x minus 10. Now there's, there's something that's sort of priming my brain that I'm noticing right away that's making me think about this idea of binomial replacement. So the idea of binomial replacement is that we've got a binomial here of 4x minus 5. And if you wanted to, you could, you know, expand out your 4x minus 5 squared, you know, into your 16x squared minus 40x plus 25, whatever, and then bring your 8x and your 10 to the other side and turn it all into a trinomial. But what do you notice about 4x minus 5 and 8x minus 10? Hopefully you notice that this is double your 4x minus 5. And so this is 4x minus 5 squared on the left and two 4x minus 5s on the right. So what we can do is we can imagine taking our 4x minus 5 and saying we're gonna let's just replace that with the variable p. Then this becomes 4x minus 5 is p so p is being squared, and this is 2, and then 4x minus 5 is p, so 2p. And now we've got a really, really simple quadratic that we can factor very, very easily. We're going to bring it over to the left-hand side, p squared minus 2p equals 0. We can common factor a p, so we get p of p minus 2 equals 0. And then this gives us two solutions. We get p equals 0 or p equals 2. Remember the negative 2 becomes positive 2 when it comes to the other side. Now what we need to do is just take our 4x minus 5 and substitute it back in for p. So this is 4x minus 5 equals 0 and this is 4x minus 5 equals 2. So this 5 and it moves to the other side is going to become positive, and we're going to divide by the 4, so x is 5 fourths. This negative 5, when we bring it to the other side, becomes positive 5, so 2 plus the 5 is 7, divide by the 4 coefficient. There you have it. You've got your two solutions without needing to expand anything. We were just able to do this, this clever substitution because we noticed that we had a 4x minus 5 there, we were able to factor this special form to get the solution. Now just a note about this, this replacement, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could have just gone right from this into 4x minus 5 squared minus 2 4x minus 5s, and then you could have common factored a 4x minus 5 in front and that would leave you with a 4x minus 5 from your squared term, and then another minus 2 from the other term equals 0. And then this would give you your solution directly. Then you get your 4x minus 5, and your other factor is 4x minus 7 equals 0. And then this would give you your same solutions x equals 5 over 4 and x equals 7 over 4. But the reason why I, I prefer to do the substitution is that I find that a lot of students find this common factoring step of the binomial 4x minus 5. A lot of students find getting this thing inside from common factoring your binomial a little bit tricky. And so if you, if you do that substitution by just turning them into p's, then the common factoring becomes quite obvious. The p squared, take away a p, leaves you with a p. The negative 2p, when you take away a p, just leaves you with negative 2. So you don't, I did, what I wanted to show you is you don't, you don't have to do this substitution if you don't want to. If you want, you could just leave it as 4x minus 5s the whole way through. Whichever one works better for you. I'm going to show the p substitution for the next example, though because I think that'll work for probably more of you. Let's try another example. Let's do 7x plus 2 squared minus 10 equals negative 21x minus 6. 
Now if we're going to use this binomial replacement method, it would be very nice if this 7x plus 2 we could get out of this 21 and 6 on the right hand side. And sure enough, um, 7 times 3 is 21, and 2 times 3 is 6, and these negative signs are fine too. Instead of just factoring a 3, we will factor a negative 3. Okay, so if we uh, do negative 21 divided by negative 3, negative divided by negative is positive, uh, 7, and then x divided by nothing is x, and then negative divided by negative is positive, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So sure enough, we have 7x plus 2 on both sides of our equation. So let's do our substitution. p equals 7x plus 2. This becomes p squared minus 10 equals negative 3p. Now we need to set this equal to 0 to use the 0 property of quadratics. So we get p squared uh, negative 3p becomes plus 3p minus 10. And now we have a quadratic that factors really nicely. We need to find uh, two things that multiplies to negative 10, so a positive and a negative number, that multiplies to negative 10 and adds to, or subtracts, I guess, in this case, because one's positive and one's negative, subtracts to 3. And sure enough, 5 minus 2 is 3, and so we want positive 5 and negative 2. And that gives us our two solutions. This first one gives us p equals negative 5, and our next one gives us p equals positive 2. Now we're going to take this binomial substitution and substitute our 7x plus 2 back in for p. So this gives us that 7x plus 2 equals negative 5, and 7x plus 2 equals 2. And now we're going to solve each of these linear factors. Positive 2, when it moves to the other side, becomes negative 2. So this is going to be negative 7 over my coefficient of 7. So x equals negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. And this factor, the positive 2, when it moves to the other side, becomes negative 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 divided by 7 is still 0. That's x equals 0. So there are our solutions, x equals negative 1 or x equals 0. Okay, one more example. This one's going to look a little bit scary because it's got quadratics in it, but I think you might even be able to do this on your own. So if you're feeling pretty confident about this, why don't you just jump right into solving this yourself. Uh, pause the video once I've copied this question down and see if you can figure this out on your own. Um, that equals negative 33. Okay, so if you, if you paused, now is time for the solution. If not, I'll just go through it. The idea with this one is we've got a quadratic binomial. This x squared minus 5 appears in both terms. So let's replace both of those with p. And so we get p squared minus 14p. Um, and then this negative 3 I'm going to bring over to the left-hand side to make it plus 33. Okay, right, because we need the zero property to be able to solve this. So now we've got something that factors. Factors really nicely, actually. What multiplies to 33? Well, 3 times 11 are the obvious ones. And sure enough, negative 3 and a negative 11 would give us negative 14. And a negative times a negative will give us positive 33. So it's negative 3, negative 11. So it's p minus 3, p minus 11. Now we're going to do this x squared minus 5 substitution as we do our solutions. So um, I'm going to do show you how to do two steps in one. So this is p equals 3, which means that if you want, you could just go right into x squared minus 5 equals 3. And so this one will do in one step. Our p is x squared minus 5. So x squared minus 5 equals the negative 11 becomes positive 11. So let's solve, I guess I'll solve this one first. So the inverse of minus 5 is plus 5. So x squared equals 16. Now this last couple steps is a little bit different in this case because we don't just have x equals 16. We have x squared equals 16. And remember when you are 
undoing a squared, there's actually two possible things you could have. You could have plus root 16, or you could have negative root 16. Because negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. And positive 4 times positive 4 is also 16. So x can be positive or negative 4. And this one's going to be essentially the same thing, but with an extra step. This negative 5 becomes positive 5 on the other side. So x squared equals 8. Which means that x equals plus or minus square root 8. Now usually we want to keep the exact answer. So root 8 would be nice, except that we can simplify this radical. You guys remember simplifying radicals? There is, uh, sorry, there is a perfect square in 8 that we can pull out. What is the perfect square that goes into 8? Square root 4 goes into 8. So this is x equals plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is plus root 2 or minus root 2. So in total, we've got lots of solutions. We have, in order, from left to right, we have x equals negative 4. We have x equals negative 2 root 2. We have x equals positive 2 root 2. And we have x equals positive 4. Whew. How cool is that? We had a quadratic, a quadratic where we had a quadratic and a quadratic binomial that we could then factor out. And because we had a quadratic inside of a quadratic, we ended up with two solutions per quadratic inside our two solutions per quadratic. We've got four solutions from one equation. How cool is that? I think it's really cool, and you should too.